AP complexa. The AP complexa, also called AP complexia, are a large phylum of parasitic alveolates. Most of them possess a unique form of organelle that comprises a type of plastid called an apicoplast, and an apical complex structure. The organelle is an adaptation that the AP complexin applies in penetration of a host cell. The AP complexa are unicellular and spore forming. All species are obligate endoparasites of animals, except nephromyces, a symbiont in marine animals, originally classified as a chytrid fungus. Modal structures such as flagella or pseudopods are present only in certain gamete stages. The AP complexa are a diverse group that includes organisms such as the coccidia, gregarines, pyroplasms, hemigregarines, and plasmodia. Diseases caused by AP complexa include the name of the taxon AP complexa derives from two Latin words, apex, top, and complexus, infolds, and refers to a set of organelles in the sporozoite. The AP complexa comprise the bulk of what used to be called the sporozoa, a group of parasitic protozoans, in general without flagella, cilia, or pseudopods. Most of the AP complexa are modal, however, by use of a gliding mechanism that uses adhesions and small static myosin motors. The other main lines were the Acetosporia, now in Rhizorrhea, the Mixozoa, now known to be highly derived Cnidarian animals, and the Microsporidia, now known to be derived from fungi. Sometimes, the name Sporozoa is taken as a synonym for the AP complexa, or occasionally as a subset. All members of this phylum have an infectious stage, the Sporozoitae, which possesses three distinct structures in an apical complex. The apical complex consists of a set of spirally arranged microtubules, the conoid, a secretory body, the ropteri, and one or more polar rings. Additional slender electron dense secretory bodies, micronemes, surrounded by one or two polar rings may also be present. This structure gives the phylum its name. A further group of spherical organelles is distributed throughout the cell rather than being localized at the apical complex and are known as the dense granules. These typically have a mean diameter around 0.7 m. Secretion of the dense granule content takes place after parasite invasion and localization within the parasitophorous vacuole and persists for several minutes. Other morphological findings common to all members of this phylum include replication, mobility, AP complexins have a unique gliding capability which enables them to cross through tissues and enter and leave their host cells. This gliding ability is made possible by the use of adhesions and small static myosin motors. Other features common to this phylum are a lack of cilia, sexual reproduction, use of micropores for feeding, and the production of oocysts containing sporozoites as the infective form. Most AP complexins have an apicoplast, a non photosynthetic plastid and mitochondrial and nuclear genomes, although cryptosporidium species and gregarians are possible exceptions, as they are thought to have lost their plastids after the diverging last common ancestor of AP complexins. Within this phylum are three groups, coccidians, gregarians, and hemosporidians. The coccidians and gregarians appear to be relatively closely related. Perkinsis, while once considered a member of the AP complexa, has been moved to a new phylum Perkinsozoa. The gregarians are generally parasites of annelids, arthropods, and mollusks. They are often found in the guts of their hosts, but may invade the other tissues. In the typical gregarian life cycle, a trophozoite develops within a host cell into a schizont. This then divides into a number of merozoites by schizic and The merozoites are released by lysing the host cell, which in turn invade other cells. At some point in the AP complex and life cycle, gametocytes are formed. These are released by lysis of the host cells which group together. Each gametocyte forms multiple gametes. The gametes fuse with another to form oocysts. The oocysts leave the host to be taken up by a new host. In general, coccidians are parasites of vertebrates. Like gregarians, they are commonly parasites of the epithelial cells of the gut, but may infect other tissues. The coccidian life cycle involves morogony, gametogony, and spaogony. While similar to that of the gregarians it differs in zygote formation. Some trophozoites enlarge and become macrogametae, whereas others divide repeatedly to form microgametes, and isogamy. The microgametes are modal and must reach the macrogametae to fertilize it. The fertilized macrogametae forms a zygote that in its turn forms an oocyst that is normally released from the body. Syzygy, when it occurs, involves markedly anisogamous gametes. The life cycle is typically haploid with the only diploid stage occurring in the zygote.
which is normally short-lived. The main difference between the coccidians and the gregarians is in the gamonts. In the coccidia, these are small, intracellular, and without epimerids or mucrons. In the gregarians, these are large, extracellular, and possess epimerids or mucrons. A second difference between the coccidia and the gregarians also lies in gamonts. In the coccidians, a single gamont becomes a macro gametocyte, whereas in the gregarians, the gamonts give rise to multiple gametocytes. The hemosporidia have more complex life cycles that alternate between an arthropod and a vertebrate host. The trophozoid parasitizes erythrocytes or other tissues in the vertebrate host. Microgametes and macrogametes are always found in the blood. The gametes are taken up by the insect vector during a blood meal. The microgametes migrate within the gut of the insect vector and fuse with the macrogametes. The fertilized macrogametae now becomes an euconete, which penetrates the body of the vector. The euconete then transforms into an oocyst and divides initially by meiosis and then by mitosis, haplontic life cycle to give rise to the sporozoids. The sporozoids escape from the oocyst and migrate within the body of the vector to the salivary glands where they are injected into the new vertebrate host when the insect vector feeds again. Most members have a complex life cycle, involving both asexual and sexual reproduction. Typically, a host is infected by an active invasion by the parasites similar to entosis, which divide to produce sporozoids that enter its cells. Eventually, the cells burst, releasing merozoids, which infect new cells. This may occur several times, until gametes are produced, forming gametes that fuse to create new cysts. Many variations occur on this basic pattern, however, and many AP complexa have more than one host. The apical complex includes vesicles called rotteries and micronemes, which open at the anterior of the cell. These secrete enzymes that allow the parasite to enter other cells. The tip is surrounded by a band of microtubules, called the polar ring, and among the conoidocyta is also a funnel of tubulin proteins called conoid. Over the rest of the cell, except for a diminished mouth called the micropore, the membrane is supported by vesicles called alveoli, forming a semi-rigid pellicle. The presence of alveoli and other traits place the AP complex among a group called the alveolates. Several related flagellates, such as Perkinsis and Colpidella, have structures similar to the polar ring and were formerly included here, but most appear to be closer relatives of the dinoflagellates. They are probably similar to the common ancestor of the two groups. Another similarity is that many AP complexant cells contain a single plastid, called the apicoplast. Surrounded by either three or four membranes. Its functions are thought to include tasks such as lipid and heme biosynthesis, and it appears to be necessary for survival. In general, plastids are considered to have a common origin with the chloroplasts of dinoflagellates, and evidence points to an origin from red algae rather than green. Many of the AP complex and parasites are important pathogens of human and domestic animals. In contrast to bacterial pathogens, these AP complex and parasites are eukaryotic and share many metabolic pathways with their animal hosts. This makes therapeutic target development extremely difficult. A drug that harms an AP complex and parasite is also likely to harm its human host. At present, no effective vaccines are available for most diseases caused by these parasites. Biomedical research on these parasites is challenging because it is often difficult, if not impossible to maintain live parasite cultures in the laboratory and to genetically manipulate these organisms. In recent years, several of the AP complex and species have been selected for genome sequencing. The availability of genome sequences provides a new opportunity for scientists to learn more about the evolution and biochemical capacity of these parasites. The predominant source of this genomic information is the EU PATH family of websites, which currently provides specialized services for Plasmodium species PlasmoDB. Coccidians, ToHoDB, Pyroplasms, PyroplasmaDB, and Cryptosporidium species, CryptoDB. One possible target for drugs is the plastid, and in fact existing drugs such as tetracyclines, which are effective against AP complexins, seem to operate against the plastid. Within the AP complexa are three suborders of parasites. Within the Adelorina are species that infect invertebrates and others that infect vertebrates. The Imerarina. The largest suborder in this phylum, the life cycle involves both sexual and asexual stages. The asexual stages reproduce by schizogony. The male gametocyte produces a large number of gametes and the zygote gives rise to a noocyst, which is the infective stage. The majority are monoxonous, infect one host only, but a few are heterocynous, 
life cycle involves two or more hosts. The number of families in this later suborder is debated, with the number of families being between 1 and 20 depending on the authority and the number of genera being between 19 and 25. All members of this phylum are parasitic and evolved from a free-living ancestor. This lifestyle is presumed to have evolved at the time of the divergence of dinoflagellates and apicomplexans. Further evolution of this phylum has been estimated to have occurred about. The oldest extant clade is thought to be the Arshgregarines. Many coccidiomorpha have an intermediate host, as well as a primary host, and the evolution of hosts proceeded in different ways and at different times in these groups. For some coccidiomorphs, the original host has become the intermediate host, whereas in others it has become the definitive host. In the genera Aggregata, Adoxoplasma, Cystosoespora, Shalakia, and Toxoplasma, the original is now definitive, whereas in Akiba, Babesiosoma, Babesia, Hemogregorina, Hemoproteus, Hepatozoon, Caryolysis, Leucocytozoon, Plasmodium, Sarcocystis, and Elleria, the original hosts are now intermediate. Similar strategies to increase the likelihood of transmission have evolved in multiple genera. Polyenergid oocysts and tissue cysts are found in representatives of the orders Protococciorida and Imerida. Hypnozoids are found in Caryolysis lacerate and most species of Plasmodium. Transovarial transmission of parasites occurs in life cycles of Caryolysis and Babesia. Horizontal gene transfer appears to have occurred early on in this phylum's evolution with the transfer of a histone H4 lysine 20. H4K20, modifier, KMT5A, set 8, from an animal host to the ancestor of AP complexins. A second gene, H3K36 methyltransferase, ASHRA3 in plants, may have also be horizontally transferred. This has rarely been studied at the subclass level. The hemosporidia are related to the gregarians and the pyroplasms and coccidians are sister groups. The hemosporidia and the pyroplasma appear to be sister clades and are more closely related to the coccidians than to the gregarians. Transposons appear to be rare in this phylum, but have been identified in the genera Asca gregorina and Imeria. The first AP complex of protozoan was seen by Antony van Leeuwenhoek who in 1674 saw probably oocysts of Imeria stade in the gallbladder of the rabbit. The first species of the phylum to be described, Gregarina ovata in earwigs intestines, was named by Defoe in 1828. He thought that they were a peculiar group related to the trematodes, at that time included in Fermes. Since then, many more have been identified and named. Out during 1826 to 1850, 41 species and 6 genera of AP complexa were named. In 1951 to 1975, 1873 new species and 83 new genera were added. The older taxon Sporozoa, included in Protozoa, was created by Luke Card in 1879 and adopted by Butchley in 1880. Through history, it grouped with the current AP complex of many unrelated groups. For example, Kudo, 1954, included in the Sporozoa species of the Asatosporia, Rhizoria, Microsporidia. Fungi, Mixozoa, Animalia, and Halicosporidium, Chlorophyta, Walzert, 1978, included the genus Plastocystis, Stromenopiles. Dermocystidium was also thought to be sporozoan. Not all of these groups had spores, but all were parasitic. However, other parasitic or symbiotic unicellular organisms were included too in protozoan groups outside sporozoa, Flagellata, Ciliophora, and Sarcodina, if they had flagella. For example, many Gonetoplastida, Retortomonadida, Diplomonadida, Trichomonadida, Hypermastigida, Cilia, for example, Balontidium, or Pseudopods, for example, and Amoeba, Acanthamoeba, Nicleria. If they had cell walls, they also could be included in plant kingdom between bacteria or yeast. Sporozoa is no longer regarded as biologically valid and its use is discouraged, although some authors still use it as a synonym for the AP complexa. More recently, other groups were excluded from AP complexa, for example, Perkinsis and Calpidella, now in Protalveolata. The field of classifying AP complexa is in flux and classification has changed throughout the years since it was formally named in 1970. By 1987, a comprehensive survey of the phylum was completed. In all, 4,516 species and 339 genera had been named. They consisted of. Although considerable revision of this phylum has been done, 
the order Hemosporidia now has 17 genera rather than 9, these numbers are probably still approximately correct. Jacques Eusebi in 1988 created a new class Hemosporidiacina by merging subclass Pyroplasmacina in suborder Hemosporarina. The division into Acromatorida and Chromatorida, although proposed on morphological grounds, may have a biological basis, as the ability to store hemozoan appears to have evolved only once. Roberts and Janovi in 1996 divided the phylum into the following subclasses and suborders, omitting classes and orders, these form the following five taxonomic groups. This scheme is taken from Perkins et al. It is outdated as the Perkinsidae have since been recognized as a sister group to the dinoflagellates rather that the AP complexi adopt the remainder of the scheme appears to be valid. The name Protosporominidida has been proposed for the common ancestor of the Gregarinomorpha and Coccidiomorpha. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.